people. Hi guys, how you doing? I hope you're all safe and looking after yourselves well and enjoying some homeschooling. I guess you're missing school a bit though, hanging out with your friends, doing your favourite lessons and all the usual things. But one thing I've been missing is assemblies. I love doing assemblies, so I thought I'd do one and send it to you. Firstly because, well, I think it's good to take time to stop and think, to consider your thoughts and your feelings and to look at life from a different perspective. And secondly, because I, I love telling stories and talking about my faith and what I believe. And I love to give other people the opportunity to think about their beliefs and their faith too. So today I thought we'd look at dealing with difficulties because let's face it, it's what everyone around the whole world is having to do right now. So to get us thinking in an assembly, I, I like to start with a game or a challenge or something that's fun. Um, and I love to use volunteers. But of course, that's going to be a bit tricky as we're not even in the same room, let alone the same house each other. However, there are two people who are stuck in the same house as me and I forced them, sorry, asked them to help me this afternoon. But before I get them in here, let me explain what the challenge is. Simply, all I want them to do is throw and catch a ball. A really easy challenge, but I'm going to add different things into the mix and I'm going to make it a more difficult challenge by adding difficulties. And I want you to look and see how they get on and see how they cope with the difficulties and how they overcome it. So, Paul, Lewis, would you like to come in and join us, please? This is Paul. Say hello to Paul. Hello to Paul. <laughs> and this is Lewis. Say hello, Lewis. Hello there. Right, so here's a rugby ball. I'm going to give you <coughs> and start throwing and catching. Shouldn't be difficult. These guys are both into rugby, so it should be no problem for them. But to make it a little bit more difficult, I'm going to add another rugby ball into the mix. <laughs> okay, so they're both coping with that all right. They're working together, they've got a strategy and they're focusing on what they're doing, not on the fact that it's quite a difficult thing to do <laughs> and not, nor on the fact that they're trying to hit each other in the face. So now I'm going to make it a tiny bit more difficult. I have got some water pistols. So when they've got themselves back together, here we go. Keep going as I squirt you guys with water. <laughs> yep, they're still focusing on what they're doing. They're not looking at the problem or the difficulty and they're relying on each other and it's working okay. So now let's add another difficulty in the mix and this is my best one yet. So come on Willow. Here we have Willow, the wacky dog who loves to play with the rugby ball. Say hello Willow. Say hello to everyone Willow. Right, here we go. Fetchable, fetchable Willow. Get it. Fetchable, fetchable. Come on, fetchable. Come on Willow. Fetchable. Come back at him. Thank you very much, you can go. <laughs> Take the dog away. Thank you very much for helping us. Thank you. Thank you, Willow. Come here. Say goodbye to everyone. Say bye, world. Off you go, Willow. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as they did. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to keep going because we can get totally overwhelmed by the things that are going on around us. The only way Paul and Lewis were able to keep going was because they didn't look at the problems or when they did it all went wrong they had to focus on what they were doing again and they needed to work together and they needed to rely on each other and they knew they could rely on each other so what about you what do you do when life throws difficulties your way who do you rely on and who do you trust to get you thinking i want to tell you about somebody else and we'll find out who he relied on and who he trusted and, and how he coped with the difficulties he faced his name is robbie novak Robbie faced challenges right from the, the beginning of his life. He was born with a condition called osteogenesis imperfecta, which basically is brittle bone disease. His bones would break so easily. By the age of nine, Robbie had broken 70 bones. Can you imagine breaking 70 bones all on different occasions? Some of them really, really hard to cure and how long it would take to recover and how difficult life would be in plaster casts all that time. Well, Robbie's parents felt like they couldn't care for Robbie when he was tiny, when he was really young. And so he was put into foster care. But Robbie was a really difficult child to look after because one little thing, even just walking down the road, he could break a bone. But Robbie loved to do the things that anyone else likes to do, to run, to play football, to play on the trampoline, to ride a scooter and a skateboard. And he, and he used to carry on. And so, you know, he was really hard to look after. He ended up going from foster home to foster home, from carers to carers. He ended up going to different schools all the time and life was really, really tough. 
But then one day when he was reasonably young, he went to a new foster home and there was something different about this foster home. He could tell it. The parents were quite a bit older and they'd only just begun fostering children. In fact, Robbie was there first, I think. And they started doing it because they felt God wanted them to, to do so. Well, when they found out how many homes Robbie had lived in, they decided that they wanted to, to put an end to that. They wanted to keep Robbie. They adopted him once and for all. They accepted him into their family. It wasn't just Robbie either. He had a sister, Lexi, and she was taken into their home too. Both of them adopted, became part of their family. Now, these new parents had got older children. Robbie had got an older sister and she was married to a guy called Brad. So Brad was Robbie's brother-in-law. Rob and Brad became Robbie and Brad became really good friends they used to make films together it was something to do with what um, Brad's work was uh, at the university and uh, they loved doing it and, and Brad loved Robbie's bubbly personality and his in his optimism and his sense of fun and they soon realized that they could make a thing out of this so they would make inspirational videos that would um, encourage people to, to do good and to spread happiness and um, well, you may have heard of Robbie because he went under another name when he made these videos. Let me show you a picture of him. You may recognize him as the kid president. Here he is aged between nine and 11. Here's a picture of Robbie now. He's grown up a little bit. I'm not sure whether he's still doing kid president stuff, but he certainly still um, intends making videos and helping people to spread happiness and, and always do the best they can. Here's Robbie when he was tiny. You might just be able to work out that he's in plaster cast there, but look at that smile. Despite how difficult his life was and the difficulties he faced, Robbie always managed to focus on what life was really about and make the most of everything. And here he is, a little bit older, riding a skateboard. Despite his condition, he didn't stop enjoying life and making the most of things. And here he is, um, really um, uh, restricted in what he can do because he's in, in a plaster cast there. So what was it that helped Robbie to have such a positive outlook on life? Well, when he was taken into that new family, it wasn't just because uh, these people showed him love and acceptance. There was something even more than that. They believed in God and they helped Robbie understand that God loved him. And even though he had this difficult condition, that he was special, he wasn't unwanted, he wasn't a burden, that he was really, really loved and precious and treasured. And Robbie knew that God loved him and he knew the promises that God had made to him. He says, be strong and courageous because I will always be with you. I will never leave you. And that really helped Robbie keep going. Instead of looking at all the difficulties, I'm sure there were times when he was overwhelmed, but he also believed in God and he knew God loved him and he looked to God and he really, really got some hope and some peace and some strength from knowing that God was always with him. Well, I know it's the same for me. Whatever's going on in my life, the circumstances going on around me, whatever's going on in the world, I know God has promised to always be with me and to never leave me. He's always there to help me and he loves me. It may not change the circumstances. I may not be able to change the circumstances, but I know I'm not on my own. Sometimes I get overwhelmed because I look at how big a problem is. And at the moment, I can feel pretty scared by the coronavirus and everything that's going on around. But when I start to feel, over feel overwhelmed, I look to God. I remember who he is, I remember what he has done, I remember how much he loves me and I ask him to give me his peace and I ask him to remind me of the hope that there is in knowing him. Now I don't know whether you believe in God or not, some of you might do, some of you maybe have a different faith and I guess many of you aren't even sure what you believe but it's good to stop and think about what we believe so why don't we do that for a minute now. I just want to encourage you to have a think about the things that may be making you feel a little bit overwhelmed and I want to say to you instead of looking at the problem and looking at all the things that make you feel worried why don't you think about the people that you rely on the people that you can trust and if you like why don't you look to God and ask that he would give you a sense of his peace in this difficult situation that we're facing whether you believe in God or not I know that he believes in you and he loves you and his promise is for everybody he says if you turn to me, I will always be with you. And we can know a peace that is like no other. So why don't we just spend a moment thinking about that? If you're feeling overwhelmed, the next time you are, don't look out at the problem. Look up. Ask God for peace. Know that he loves you. Know that he's got you. 
and then you won't be so afraid. You can deal with the difficulties that come your way.